The CFT training package includes seven different products related to the renewable energy field. By clicking on the subscribe button, you will be informed about the newest CFT training videos by Mr. CFT. Or if you are watching the training video, click on the Mr. CFT logo and subscribe. The renewable energy includes four major energy sources such as water, wind, solar, and also combustion. In this CFD training package that includes all these four different energy sources, we simulate the oscillatory wave and also a horizontal axis tidal turbine that benefits from water and wave energy. Then we investigate the wind energy for modeling and simulating two different kinds of very popular turbines of HAWT and also VAWT. After that, we go to the solar energy and simulate two different projects of a solar collector and also the radiator that heated by a solar panel. And finally, we investigate a biomass combustion CFD simulation by ANSYS Full and Software. In this project, we are going to simulate a horizontal axis water turbine. Next, right click on mesh and then go over import mesh file. Then click on browse and then select the mesh file that is sent to you with the rest of the files. By clicking on the outlet boundary condition, you will see that the type of this boundary is defined as pressure outlet. By clicking on edit, you will be able to change the setting for this boundary. For example, we want to extract pressure contour on the turbine blade. On the domain section, we click on rotor domain, and in the location, we click on turbine blade. We also set the variable as pressure, because we are, as is shown in the pressure contour of turbine mold, we can see that on the tip of the blade, where the blade first collide with the airflow, the pressure has increased. Also, you can see that on the blade of the turbine, a section has clearly a lower pressure than other section, which means that the wake has happened in that place. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. The present study deals with the heat transfer within a pipe carrying water flow in a parabolic solar collector. And as for the mesh, the meshing of the model has been done using ANSYS meshing software and the mesh type is a structure. The element number is equal to 1,475,000. As you can see, after double clicking on the energy button in the appeared box, we have enabled the energy equation since we want to uh, account for the, for the temperature changes in our computational domain. In order to generate 2D contours, just have to right click on the contours button and then select new. In the appeared window, under the contours of section, you can select your desired variable. For example, in this slide, we have selected the temperature variable. After defining the variable, we go under the surfaces section and click on our desired surfaces where we want to see our contours. For example, we have selected outlet in this case. After that, by clicking on save or display button, the software will show you the 2D contour. In this slide, you can see the temperature contour on the outlet boundary. You can easily see the temperature changes on the lower section of the outer wall where we had the higher heat flux applied. In order to see a different contour, just have to change the variable. After that, just like the previous slides, you can select your desired surface and then click on Save or Display button. In this slide, you can see the velocity distribution on the outlet boundary. You can easily see the fluid flow reaching the fully developed state. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. In this project, we are going to simulate a three-blade horizontal axis wind turbine. The present study deals with the airflow on the HAWT blades so that the purpose of the problem is to study the distribution of velocity and pressure on the surface of the blades and on their body. There are three areas around the blades for airflow. There is an area around the blades, an area in front of the blades, an area behind the blades. The airflow behaves normally in front and behind the blades, while in the area around the blades, the rotational motion of the blades causes the rotational airflow. Now, if you double click on each of the two zones shown here, in the appeared window, you will see air is set in front of the material name. 
Now, if you double click on the moving zone button in the appeared window, you will see we have also enabled the frame motion option. After enabling that option, a new part will appear under the reference frame tab. In this section, all you have to do is to change your rotational velocity section and set the speed equal to 72 radian per second. Next, if you double click on the boundary conditions button and then click on inlet boundary, you will see the type of this boundary is defined as velocity inlet. By clicking on edit button, a new window will appear in which you can change the settings for this boundary. In this window, you will see a moment coefficient report output type is defined over the wind turbine walls. Now, in order to extract the velocity vectors, you have to click on vectors button and then accept the appeared window. And finally, in this slide, you can clearly see the velocity vectors of the airflow and how they rotate around the blade. Finally, a summary of the settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented in this slide. In project number four, we investigate the biomass combustion CFT simulation by ANSYS Full and Software. In the present simulation, since the inlets of air and the fuel are separated and the fuel and oxidizer do not combine before entering the inner space of the chamber, the reaction is defined as non-premixed. Also, energy behavior is non-adiabatic. Finally, this table is a summary of the steps for defining the problem and its solution as a review. In this project, we will simulate the oscillatory wave and its effect on fin motion. The two-dimensional geometry of the present model is designed by Design Modeler software. The geometry of the model is divided into three main areas, structured, unstructured, and stationary. In the structure section, a rigid ball with the name of ball dynamic is used as the main factor in the flow waveform, while the upper and lower walls are used as wall bottom deforming and outlet deforming respectively. In the unstructured section, the entire unstructured section is defined as deformation acceptor zone and the wall flap dynamic wall as a rigid reciprocating rotational object. Now if you expand the fluid section under the material, you can see that two phases of air and water liquid are defined here. Now in order to add a new phase, all you have to do is to right click on fluid and then select new. Now if you double click on the dynamic mesh button, you can see that we have enabled the dynamic mesh option and under the mesh methods you can see that we have also enabled the smoothing and remeshing option. By clicking on settings button, you can change settings for these models. In the appeared window under the release from section, we select our whole domain as we select the fluid domain and then click on save or display button. And now in this slide in the streamlines contour, you can easily see the streamlines which are related to the waves that are produced inside our computational domain as there are separate streamlines inside of it. Finally, the summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. The present problem simulates the airflow passing over an H-type Darius wind turbine. The simulation is based on a reference paper named Wind Tunnel and Numerical Study of a Small Vertical Axis Wind Turbine, and its results are compared and validated with the results in the article. As for the final report, you can see a moment coefficient report output type is defined over the surface of our three blades. At the end of this simulation, the results of the present work are compared and validated with the results obtained by the paper. For this purpose, the diagram in figure 14 was used to show the changes of torque coefficient over time for each rotor plate. Now, if you can remember correctly, when we talked about defining three different reports in the report definition section, the third report was about calculating the moment coefficient over the three different blades of the turbine. And this diagram is plotted using the data obtained by that report. In the appeared window under the contours of section, we select velocity as our desired variable and then under the surfaces section, we select our previously defined plane. And now in this slide, you can easily see the velocity distribution inside our computational domain when the airflow passes over the blades of our turbine. As can be seen in the pressure contours, 
Due to the constant variation of the position of the blades and therefore their angle of attack, the pressure applied on the blades changes constantly. These constant changes in pressure bring up one of the major challenges of VAWTs, which would be the dynamic stall. Also, due to the changes in pressure, the blades of a VAWT are fatigue prone due to the wide variation in applied forces during each rotation. These challenges can be overcome by the use of modern composite materials and improvement in design, including the use of aerodynamic wingtips that cause the spread or wing connections to have a static load, since the vertically oriented blades can twist and bend during each turn, causing them to break apart. Another prominent factor regarding the rotation of VAWTs is the generation of the tip vertex on the top tip of the blades. Based on the phase angle of each blade, the strength of the tip vertex is different. The strength of the tip vertex is a sign of a lift force applied on each blade. The stronger the tip vertex core, the stronger the lift force applied on the blade. This change in strength is due to the changing lift developed by the turbine rotor blade as it rotates through different phase angles. It should be noted that there is likely to be a small delay between the maximum lift being developed and the maximum strength of the tip vertex occurring. This will simply be to the time required for the flow to respond to the changing lift around the rotor blade. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. In this project, fluid heat exchange is simulated inside a radiator pipes which is heated by a solar panel. And also the effect of the gravity has not been taken into account. Also the operating pressure in the operating condition section is equal to the atmospheric pressure. All the walls in this CFT simulation are stationary wall with no slip. As we know the solar panel wall should be as a convection thermal condition because uh, the free stream uh, connect to this solar panel and also the temperature of the free stream is equal to the 300 degree of Kelvin that shows the ambient temperature and also the heat transfer coefficient is equal to 5 and beside the material of the solar panel is assumed to be the aluminium the standard initialization method has been applied for the initialization of the CFD simulation as we can see, the gauge pressure is equal to zero, the x velocity and y velocity are again equal to zero, and the z velocity has a magnitude that it shows that the compute from inlet's boundary has been applied. As we can check in the console part, the outlet temperature has been increased more than one degree and it's equal to 1.77 degree of kelvin increase in the temperature because uh, of the heat transfer between the radiator pipe and also the solar panel the applied settings are recapitulated in the following tables as a review obtain the mesh file and also the full training movie by purchasing this product to benefit from master cft services including simulation consultation and training contact our experts via info at sign mr cfd.com